the Muslims, dear believers, As-salamu alaykum. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya as-salam. Hayya as-salam. Hayya al-fallah. Hayya al-fallah. Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. That is, praise be to Allah, the guardian, evolver, cherisher, keeper, sustainer of all the worlds, all the systems of knowledge. We render all praises to him and we seek his help and we ask for his forgiveness. We put our faith and trust in him. Mighty and sublime is he. I bear witness and give open testimony that there is nothing worthy of worship except the law and the law alone, the one and only. There is none like unto him. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is of our servant, messenger prophet, and guide to all of humanity for all time. We ask Allah's peace, his blessings, his highest exaltation be upon Prophet Muhammad, upon his family, his companions, for righteous all on us, O Muslims, be peace. Dear beloved Muslims, dear believers, I greet you in the greeting, As-salamu alaykum. As-salamu alaykum. Welcome to the Salat of Jumu'ah. What follows of this excellent salutation to our Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on you. Dear Muslims, I advise you, as I advise myself, to fear Allah, to have top for Allah, to reverence Him, have regard for Him and His creation, and know that He is the Creator of all, that He creates but was never created. We should fear God as He should be feared. Today, brothers and sisters, I want to talk to you or speak to you from our holy book, the Quran on El Furqan, that is the criterion, the standard or rule by which something can be judged. When you look at the word criteria as an English word, it is described as a noun. In fact, it's described as a singular noun. We may better recognize this word in its plural form when we talk about criteria say, what is the criteria for something? Right? Well, I just discovered that the word criteria is plural to the word criteria. And, and when you think about it, uh, in fact, uh, 
in my lifetime, the word criterion was only introduced to me from correct. In, in, in that singular form. And what was more interesting to me is as, as I studied just this just this one word. It it's a in a one word definition it means standard. But when you use it as an adjective that is a word that you use to describe something. It is defined as being authoritative. And that speaks directly to the, to the authority that is to Allah the Most High. Because it is Allah the Most High that speaks of this subject, al Falcon in the Quran, the criteria. And who better to give us the criteria than Allah himself? In Quran, Allah says, the unbelievers will be cast and bound together into a constricted place. They will plead for destruction there and then. But Allah says, don't plead for even a single destruction. Plead for a destruction to be repeated often. And Allah has certainly spoken the truth. But then the question became to me, but, well, why would you do that? And, and, and I guess the bigger question is, why would you deny, deny the messenger of Allah that drove you towards unbelief in the first place? And then when you go to plead to your Lord for just a single destruction, in other words, you know, please God, just get rid of me. God says, no, don't plead for that. Plead for destruction to be repeated often. And that becomes a warning. That becomes a warning to the disbeliever. And, and who are these disbelievers as we define them as being? Kafirs. But even when you study that word kafir, kafir is not just a disbeliever. Kafir means to cover. These are people who know what the truth is. I mean, can you imagine? You know the truth? And then you're going to go and cover it up? That's what makes you a Catholic. Not just the fact that you disbelieve. Because there's some folk, they haven't risen to the level yet of, of even understanding that there is a God. I mean, look at, look at your babies. Look at your children. They haven't come into the knowledge of God just yet. Not in their conscious mind. But we can remind them as, as, as they grow, their unconscious mind begins to raise up, rise up into themselves, and then once they become more conscious, once they've been exposed as Muslims, young Muslims, to the fast during the month of Ramadan, they have to process that. It takes them time. And then once they discover, once Allah blesses them to discover that it is the authority, it, this is the criteria in which I must follow. And yes, it may take them a little longer. I mean, look how long it took us. We, we, we bypassed I don't know how many exits to do right in order to continue down the path of wrong. But once we found that exit, those of us that even just had a little common sense decided that this is the road that I need to stay on. Allah says, 
that we are to strive for the garden beneath which rivers flow, the one that is being promised to the righteous, that there is both a reward as well as a goal. And when I read this, I realized that where Allah says, that he will, he will bless us to receive a better thing. It, it would make you wonder, well, what, what is this better thing? It means that there's something bigger, that there's something more wondrous, something more spectacular than what you can ever imagine. You, 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 you can't, you, you can't even close your eyes and even imagine what the Jannah is going to be like. All that is being withheld from you. And it should inspire you to want to stay on this Sarota Mustaqim in order to see what Allah has in store. And he's already told you time and time again that he's going to reveal all of this to you in the next life just to make you believe what he told you on this earth. He's got to do that for both the believer and the disbeliever. So that you, all, both of us, both the believer and the disbeliever will be able to bear witness. Allah spoke the truth. He said there was an authority greater than me. He tried to advise me not to fornicate, not to eat pork, not to smoke and drink and, and gamble and to treat my parents and the orphans with respect and, to, and, and for us Muslims to pay the zakat, to make your prayers five times. I mean, all of this, he's going to reveal all of that to both the believer and, a dis, and the disbeliever. And we know which one is going to be the most happiest. And at this point, we can feel shame for those who heard this message but did not respond. And the response is what is required of you from Almighty God. Not just for you to hear and obey. Part of your being obedient requires you to respond. Not just to answer. Response is much deeper than just an answer. Response says, yes, I understand. Go to a courtroom. And the judge asks you, sir, madam, how do you plead? I plead guilty, Your Honor. Sir, do you understand your response? Do you understand what it means? Do you understand the criterion in which I'm going to judge you based on your response, not just your answer. Do you fully understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And if you've ever been in a courtroom and heard that language and heard that tone that comes from the judge, we know he's not a law. But when you're in that courtroom, when you're in that environment, you are under his or her criteria. You are under their authority. Now how much more do we think we should honor God by understanding who is the authority in every aspect of our life? Not just the courtroom. In the court, outside the court, while you're eating, while you're sleeping, while you're going to the to the to the to, to the offices of nature, who is the authority? 
And that's when our Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on him, has always instructed us, whatever we do, before we do it, we say Bismillah. Everything, eating, going to the bathroom, it don't matter. When you walk out of your door, when you come back into your house, why do you do that? Because it shows your, your reverence for God. It shows that, that you understand not only in, in your intelligent mind, but also in your heart who's the authority over you in every aspect of your life. Allah says that on this day your deeds shall be floating dust scattered about. A day of dire difficulty for the disbelievers. The ones led astray from the message of Allah after it had come to them. Oh, the evil one is nothing but a traitor to man. that we take our own passions and impulses as our God. You cannot help those to dispose of their affairs. Allah certainly has spoken the truth. Our prophet, God's messenger, may Allah's peace and blessings upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's reported, he said, when your good deed pleases you and your evil deed grieves you, you are a believer. When a thing disturbs the peace of the heart, give it up. It was also reported that he said, Look to those less fortunate than you. It is better for you that you that you do not deny what Allah has blessed you with. And th those, I, I read those particular hadiths because it is a part of the criterion in which we should be following. Oftentimes, when we address you here at New Africa, we will address you, I know I will address you as Muslims, and sometimes I will speak to both the Muslim and the believer. Because I don't know, it, it's Allah who will decide, first of all, it was Allah that de who decided to make you Muslim. You didn't do this on your own. He guided you here. Whether you came through the first under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad or whether you came afterwards under the leadership of Imam Debbie D. Muhammad, you were guided here. And some of us deviated even after that guidance was given to us. And thank God for, for, for his forgiveness and for his mercy that he guided you back. The opportunity is always available to you as long as you're on this side of the dirt. Because the one thing that none of us can risk is coming before our Lord and being stripped down. Where everything from your fingernails to your toenails to the nostrils in your to the to the to the nose hairs in your nostrils will be given the opportunity to speak. And you're going to look at your feet and your hands and your nails and the hair that was in your nose and say, but well, why are you speaking again? Because my Lord, my authority has given me the power of speech. And as, as Imam Amin mentioned the other day, your hands and feet are going to be like a broke refrigerator. They ain't going to be able to keep nothing. They're going to tell it all. Yes, 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 Allah. He, 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 he took his feet 
into the after hours joint. And yes, he did have a pork chop sandwich while he was there. Yeah. It's gonna tell on you. And no, there was no reason for him not to fast during the month of Ramadan. He was healthy, she was healthy. They just chose not to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Tom, why are you telling on me? Because Allah has given me the power to speak. So all these things are going to bear witness against you. And I don't want to leave you in a funk because all the good things that you do are also going to be told as well. So it's not just, it, it's not just the bad things. It's going to be all things. And you're going to even find out on that day that some of the things you thought were bad are really accepted as good. But Allah is the judge of that. Not you, not me, not your wife, not your parents, no one else. Not the, not the imam, not the rabbi, not the preacher, none of them. Allah is the judge. And he'll decide in the end which way you're going to go. Be just like a movie theater. Except there ain't but two doors. Huh? They ain't like the price is right. What's behind door number three? There is no door number three. There's door number one, and there's door number two. That's it. And everything is going to have a taste of death. That's a promise to your Lord, from your Lord, that you all going to have it. In fact, you all going to get to see hell just before you take it out into the general. You got to know it's there. You've been told about it here. I'm telling you about it now. But in order for you to know the sure reality, you're going to see it. You got to see it just so that you'll be able to satisfy in your heart and your soul. My God did say it existed. But thank God he took me out. And, and that's, that's, that's what that is what we are going to have to face as Muslims and even should Allah bless us to rise to the capacity of, of, a, of a believer. When your good deed pleases you and your evil deed grieves you, you are a believer. When a thing disturbs the peace of the heart, give it up. Let's pray for forgiveness. While I'm thinking about it, there's been several times that I want to advise you and, and, and I will bring you the exact uh, hadith uh, at a, another point in time, but it, it is enough for me to want to remind you now because I continue to remind myself that Prophet Muhammad, the prayers of the peace be on him, instructed us that before we make a dua, that we say, Alhamdulillah, he will be high to me. Ashadu ala illa hai illa waqfu waqfu illa ashadu illa hu, wa ashadu anna Muhammad al-Muhammad al-Rasul. And then you begin your dua. So a lot of times when you see me sit and it takes <coughs> for me to stand up back up before you, I say that before I actually say any who are you know, to allow asking for his forgiveness. And, and um, I will bring you the exact language for that. In fact, I first may have learned that at Takwa Anu. They had a sign up. Just like we have stuff posted up down here, we were at Takwa Anu. We had a little vestibule out there. A boy, a 
out in the vestibule on that board. There was an instruction that the imams, Imam Dawood Mahdi and Imam Sultan Abu, had posted up on that board. And I can't tell you how many years ago that was. And I still remember it and still do it to this day. Because it was instruction. And that instruction was part of our growth. It was part of my growth. It was part of your growth. That's why you keep coming here. You keep coming here because you need this nourishment. Allah says in the Quran that your growth and your development is like that of a plant. Well, a, a, a plant needs nourishment. It's not going to just grow without sunshine, without nutrients, without water, without the, the, the minerals and things that, that it needs. And you know this, you just don't recognize it. How do you know it? Because you didn't come on this earth a grown man or a grown woman. You came here as an infant. In fact, Allah gives you your development in stages. He says that you, are, you grow in stages. He takes you all the way back to, to, to even before you were even thought about. And he takes you back to the leech like clock and how you were formed. And then he clothed the form, he, he, he clothed you with, with, with muscles and bones and skin. I mean, took you that far back. And look at you now. Look at you now. Four foot ten or six foot two. 150 pounds or 245 pounds. Look at you now. That's not how you came out. You grew and you developed. What was your nourishment? You figure that out. I know what mine was. What fed you? What helped you to grow? How do you know you've grown? No simple stuff. You grown man now. You grown woman. Go back to your elementary school. Just walk through the building where you went to elementary school and try to figure out in your own head how in the world did I make it in this environment? As big as you are now. Little desks, little chairs, little rooms. And then what happens? You left elementary school and where'd you go? You went to middle school. You went to junior high school. Well, your junior high school, your middle school was bigger than your elementary school, wasn't it? Why? Because you were now, you were growing. You were developing. And look at a plant. If you take any plant and put it in a small pot, that plant is only going to grow the size of that pot. No bigger. As God is my witness, it will not get any bigger. Depending on the size, the, the type of pot that you put it in, if you put it in one of them cardboard pots, even one of them plastic pots, eventually that plant will grow so big that it will bust the sides of that pot. Won't do it on a clay pot. Won't do it on like a metal pot, but on a like a little paper cardboard pot. But that's grow that's the plant growing. If you want to stagnate the growth of that plant, put it in a pot where it can't grow. What do you think a bonsai is? You see a bonsai plant? Little teeny, they, they'll take a big tree, a big tree, and 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 only allow that tree to grow so big. You're not like that. In fact, there may be some in the scriptural world that will tell you that that's unnatural. Because that's not how Allah intended for the tree to be. Like those of you that keep fish in a fish tank. That ain't natural. Now, I'm not telling you it's un-Islamic. I'm not going to go that far, but it's unnatural. Now, I will tell you that Allah said, do not take things out of the state in which he created it. Taking it out of its natural state. But it's part of that growth and development. You can take there's, there are plants that require full sun 8, 9, 10, 12 hours a day. That plant will grow 
if it only gets four hours of sunlight. But it may not produce flowers. It may not produce the fruit. It will not get as big as Allah intended for it to get because it's not getting the proper nourishment that it should. Now when I'm talking to you in this way, don't think about it in terms of plants. Think about it in terms of you as a human being. Why you haven't grown. Why you haven't reached your full potential. Why? Because you haven't gotten the nourishment that you need. You haven't gotten the support that you need. Your sunshine has been weak. You've only gotten four hours when you should have got 14. You had no minerals. You had no nutrients. Nobody's giving you water. In fact, you won't even drink water. And Allah tells you that he, everything was made from water. But you don't like it. And then you want to know how come you know you 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 got all these diseases that are directly associated with you not drinking water. Come on, man. This ain't rocket science. Don't make this religion more complicated than it has to be. Allah tells you that. He says to you there's no compulsion in this religion. And when you juxtapose what Allah says to you with all of the mercy that he's going to show you and everything, you already know it. You just don't see it. It's right in front of you. Every morning that you wake up, do you think that the sunshine discriminates whether you are a good person or a bad person? No. Allah is merciful to everybody. You're not going to be able to identify the, the bad person because there ain't no sunlight around him. But you'll certainly be able to recognize the believer because the light is going to perceive him or her. You'll know it. But that's because that plant, that human being, has reached their full potential. Now, let's bring this to New Africa. We've been here however long we've been here. And I would submit to us that we're like a potted plant in a small pot. And we, we want to grow. I'm not satisfied just being here. I mean, it, this, this is nice. I, I like it here. It feels good. It's cool in the summer. It's warm in the winter. But more importantly, in this house, there is absolutely no fit. I mean, you you you'd have to find you'd have to find it you'd have to go around here and find a celery seed a mustard seed before you found any fitness in this house that's what that's what makes this coffee we have leadership here but the leadership is not overbearing but why do you need a leader god says you need a leader you have it every time we stand up for Salat. You are a leader in your own home. You have to follow leadership. It's best for you. If you but knew. And try, try not having it. And see how far you get. Particularly those of you that are out in the world. And you're on your job. And, and your supervisor is your leader. But your supervisor is not leading. What happens to the group? It falls apart. When we use the language here about you having respect for leadership, that you follow leadership, you don't only have to do it here, it also applies out there. And it also means that you are able to tell that leader, I'm sorry, I can't follow you anymore. You do that too. Because even in the plant world, you can take a plant up out of the ground, take two sides of it, and split it 
and take the one side that you have and put it in the ground and take the other side and the other hand and put it in the ground and both sides will grow. They got a whole lot of plants like that. There's not a plant that exists on the face of the earth that you can't break off a branch or you can't split that plant and turn it into other plants. Get the plant out your head. Now I'm talking about the community. I'm talking about the growth of the community. Because we, we are stagnating here. And one thing that I know about plants is the same thing that I know about people. They will only grow based on the amount of maintenance and care and attention that you give to them. Now you can leave it alone. Just like from time to time, if you look out in front of here, we leave that alone and look what happens. You get weeds. You get plants growing in there that you don't know where they came from. Where, where did this come from? And sometimes they some sometimes they're pretty plants. But then when you start to understand the correlation of how those things got there, then you understand how a law populates the earth. Because it's the birds and the bees that bring these pollen, pollen from various plants and they may drop the seed. You know, you, you've seen a bird go along and try to pick up more, you know, pick up more in its beak than what it's able to carry. And you haven't studied the bee enough to know that, that, that when, when, when they are involved in their intercourse with flowers, because that's what it is. It's, it's an intercourse that they're having with flowers. And they extract from the flower what they do. Some of that, what they extract what, what, what you are calling the, 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 the pollen, as they fly off, some of that pollen might spread. And all of a sudden, you may find, I don't know, you, you may find some flower growing up in your garden that you didn't put there. But it wasn't up to you. Some things you can control, other things you can't. What we do here to the extent that Allah has given us the authority to establish this and has allowed it to grow and prosper, how much more should we show our appreciation to God by improving upon the condition that he's put us in? Because Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on him, said whenever a Muslim seeks to do something, he seeks to perfect it question I have for you men in particular, is this the best that we can do? It's just a question. Just a question. And, and it's not a question where I'm beating you up. All I'm doing now is planting the seed. That's all I'm doing. As a law is my witness, all I'm doing is planting a seed. Now I can also tell you when that seed is planted, you don't know when it's going to sprout. Allah knows. We don't know. But I know that my responsibility is to deliver to you a clear message. One where I can help you to make the connection just in case you can't. Because I'm dealing with people of intelligence. And we have different levels of intelligence. And because of that different level of intelligence, what I need to know is once that seed has been planted, what part of your intelligence is going to say to the community? Brothers and sisters, I think I have an idea for us to be able to grow from here. How we're going to be able to better what it is, the presentation that we want to make to not only 
to ourselves, but to the rest of the world. And it's not difficult. So here, here's what I'm going to encourage us to do. Because the, the seed has been planted. I want us, those of us, who want to see improvement, I want us to start thinking far enough ahead to say, we need to develop and maintain our own community in a building that we own. We as a community. And when you follow that logic, that logic is going to require us to first make sure that our own individual houses are in order. Now what do I mean by that? Most of you adults, most of you responsible adults that either own personal property, own personal real estate, you have your own financial condition, whatever that financial condition is, You've got your own credit with, you know, credit score. I, mean, I, I don't know what it is. I'm, I, that's not what I'm discussing. What I am discussing with you is wherever you are in your own financial plan stage right now, I'm saying to you as a seed, start looking towards improving your financial condition because I am going to keep nurturing you and watering you and giving you the nutrients and all the minerals that you need that one day I want to see a little, that, that, that seed is going to break. And when that seed breaks, we still need to provide you with the watering and the nurturing and all, and, and then you'll start to see a little shoot, a little green shoot that'll break the surface of the earth. But all of that that takes place before it even breaks that surface, it is going to be required of us, if you want to see this plant grow, that we get our own personal finances in order. Now, because I recognize that some of us need to have a more of a visual to, 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 you know, because some of us are, are you know, we, we require having a vision. So here's what I want you to visualize. At the present rate that we are going right now, as the administrator, I can, I can comfortably tell us, and if I have to come back to us and walk this back, you know, I'll do that. But I would say to us by the end of this year, by December 31st of this year, this community should, should have at least $10,000 in a bank. And I would tell you, I would say to you, that sometime during the 2016, that we may, I may come to each one of you, and we will have a series of meetings. And in these series of meetings, the things that we're going to be discussing is how is it that you think you and I, or you, me, and one other person, two other persons, maybe three other persons, can come together, form an LLC or some sort of business entity where each one of our investments is protected, and we buy a house. 
It's a red house. I ain't talking about no, I ain't talking about no commercial building. I ain't talking about building anything from the ground up. We we, we not we, we not there yet. We, this this is a, a this is a, a, a seed. Now if we get there and we're ready to do more than what I'm suggesting that we do, that's fine. But in my lifetime, and I'll never forget it. A hustler told me, say, young boy, you can do it a little, but you can do it a lot. If you can't make dollars, make quarters, because they all add up. So here, here, here we are. We don't have to start out with no 10, 20,000 square foot, two, two, le two levels above and one below, you know, with a parking lot for, you know, for 500 cars. No. The law in the District of Columbia allows any religious organization to occupy a home for its religious worship. A regular house. Now as you riding along, I mean, you know, you, you may want to call them storefront churches or whatever, you know, however you may want to describe them. And time doesn't permit me to tell you about many of the storefront churches. But I will mention one, and I'll give you, give you its location. Over on, between Rhode Island Avenue and, and uh, 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 12th and Rhode Island around uh, Brentwood, Brentwood Road and, and 12th Street, there's a, there's a, a relatively large Christian organization, and I'm only using them as an example, because when I was a little boy, I can tell you right now, they were in a house over on H Street. It was my Aunt Helen's church. And of course, you know, little boy, she took me to church. And it was in this home turned into a church, but when I look at them today, they just put a huge wing on to the building that they've been occupying for the last 10, 15, 20 years. But they moved off of a house just off of H Street. I think it might have been somewhere on 11th Street off of H. Somewhere in that community. Maybe I could ride over there and point to you where that house was. But they started off small in a house and then they and that's what I'm going to suggest that we do. I mean, just to do that would be big for us. And to be able not only to do it, but then be able to maintain it. Because that's the other part of the plant world. You don't just put the thing in the ground and just let, you know, like like like, like some, of, some of you guys do, you know. When the last time you watch, oh man, I let God wash my car. <laughs> no. No. You can't just put this seed in the ground and just let it go. You got to nourish it. And even a farmer will tell you that when they plant food, one of the reasons why, particularly if you have a big farm, you may notice like on the back 40, they don't have anything growing back there. Because you can't keep robbing the soil of nutrients and think that it's going to just continue to give you the same growth. So what they do, they've learned how to leave some of, and this is Quran. This, this, is, this is from Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on him, when he told us how to eat. He said a third was for you. All right? You had to leave one third for your stomach. So what does that get? That, that, that means you don't eat your fill. You got to leave a little something. The farmers have learned that. So they'll leave a plot of land where nothing is growing on it. And they do that so that that plot of land will build up more nutrients and more minerals so that when they do plant, it's going to give them the yield that they look at. And they had to learn that the hard way because they would, in fact, and I'm using this, this term loosely, they would rape the earth by simply 
planted year after year after year after year. And then they saw, one year they saw, oh man, you know, last year, you know, I walked away with 40 tons of soybeans. This year I didn't get the three. Something's wrong. And then, of course, you know, they have somebody come in and test the soil and they tell them, say, well, you know, this, you're going to have to give, you're gonna have to give this part of the earth a rest. To give it time. And, and what you're doing is you're giving God time to be able to rebuild the nutrients and the, and the minerals and stuff this soil needs. So it will give that will. So it will give the yield that you're looking for. And it's God that told you he's the one who controls time. So it's not on you. Now, if you want to keep putting stuff in the ground, if you want to keep going back and doing the same thing the same way that you've been doing it, then also know that you're only going to get what it is that you put into it. All right? And that's Hadith too. From Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be on him. Those of you who migrated for marriage, for women, you're going to get what you migrated for. Ain't no different. So if you want to keep doing the same things that you've been doing and yielding the same yield that you've been getting, go right here. That's all you're going to get. But if you do this for if you do this because you recognize it as being part of your own personal growth and development, has there ever been a time in your life that you've looked back on something and said, this is something that the law helped me to build? That you could take pride in? That those of you who, who have um, who, who have descendants, who have children, wouldn't you like to be able to take them to something that you own, that you have a stake in, that you're responsible for, that you can say to them, this is my God. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi, I of me. Because don't, 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 don't forget that. Don't let your pride come in front of you. But there is a way for us to do that. <clears throat> now, I'd be remiss if I didn't say to you that I have a plan and I will share that plan with you. But that law is the best plan. But I'm trying to offer us something. Whether you accept it or reject it, you will not be able to leave here and say, that brother didn't try to offer us something. You know a whole lot. So having said that, I'm going to do myself what I'm asking you to do. I want to get my financial house in order. So that when we are ready to make this move, that I and those who wish to follow this particular process will be ready. Because the main thing that we're going to need is to be able to finance what it is that we're trying to do. And you can't finance anything if your financial house is not in order. Now, if it turns out that I get myself so much together that I'm able to do this on my own, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it by myself. Because that's enabling us. What I'm proposing is something that will outlive all of us. It cannot be tied to me personally because when I die, I don't want it to die with me. It's got to be perpetual. And the only way that I know to make things perpetual is to be able to in involve a group where it's set up 
that way that this belongs to the group. There are no, 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 no little lies and big use. Okay? This is, this, this, this is all about a group. And there, there, there are business mechanisms where these things can be set up where the group is protected. And so this is, this is, this is my, this is my, my I'm going to call it my, my spiel to you. And I, I'll accept that. But I will say that I'm in this because I want to perfect everything that I do. I want everything that we do to be a reflection of us. That we have a material showing that we can say we did that. Because for sure, when I say to you by the end of the year, we will have $10,000. We did that. Everybody that put a quarter in that box. And by the way, I, I, I want to say to us and, and the sisters, every Friday for the last, well, I can't tell you how many years, I've gone into that box and I've pulled out that thing. And I can tell you right now, brothers, we need to be most appreciative of our sisters, you know, who also give. You may not know it because you don't see it, but they also do. And, and I can't tell you how much it humbles me when I go back there. And even here lately, and when I say lately, I'm talking about the last three, four months. And when I go into that box, it's very seldom that I see dollar bills. You know, single one dollar bills. If I see them, somebody's all wrapped them up and there's like 10 of them there. But most times when I go to that box, it's like 20, 10, 5s. No one. I mean, that, that's, in, in, in my mind, for the last three or four months, that's a testament to us. Because you all are only going. When you give, you're not giving to me. You are not giving to me. The law is clear as to who zakat and what charity is for. And should there be a need, we're here to provide that need to those who have supported us. That's an obligation on us. No way to get around. There's no ambiguity about that. And, and so, if it hasn't been said to you before, I personally want to thank you. I personally want to extend to you my appreciation for how I've seen this community grow. Just in terms of how it gives. And that also says to me that there's a certain level of trust that you've put in us as part of the, the, the leadership here, as well as those of us who associate with that leadership, that there's a part of you that says, I trust them. Been a long time since I bought a brand new Cadillac. So you know I'm not doing, you know, you, you know we're not taking your money and going by no, <laughs> making any personal improvements. It's not about us. It, this, 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 this is all about this community and its growth. And we've got to see an improvement. And we can do it. That in, in Islam, we don't recognize age. I heard Imam W. D. Muhammad say that on any number of occasions. He's put it in a tape. He's been asked questions over and over again. You know, a, a, a brother Imam. Uh, what are we going to do about our seniors, you know, who are reaching age and, you know, and they're ready to retire? A Muslim don't retire? 
this, this, I mean, this ain't a job where you can look up and you know you say, well, you know, I put in forty years. You know, now I'm going to. What does that mean? You gonna stop praying? You gonna stop giving zakat? You gonna stop recognizing that there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is His messenger? What are you retiring from? You ain't gonna believe in the books no more. You ain't gonna believe in the angels no more. You're not gonna believe in the gender.